The following program is brought to you in living color. Now, it's time for an eclectic mix of interviews and some of the oddest news stories you'll ever hear. It's the Stuff File Program with Peter Anthony Holder. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Peter Anthony Holder here with you, and yes, this is indeed another edition of the Stuff File Program, number 0597. And coming up on this edition of the Stuff File Program, you'll meet Peter Alessandria, who is a former lawyer who became an award-winning photographer. He's the author of Be Bigger Than You Think You Are. What led to the switch in careers? I lost my law business in 2008, 2009 in the global financial crisis. And by the summer of 2009, it was clear that it was not going to come back anytime soon. And I think at one point I had read a book called Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. And so I decided, you know, maybe this is an opportunity for me to do something. I certainly enjoyed being an attorney, but it was never my passion in life. And I thought, you know, if I'm ever going to do this, let me give it a shot. So it was at that moment that I decided to turn my hobby slash passion into my business. You're listening to The Stuff File Program with me, Peter Anthony Holder. The Stuff File Program is a listener-supported, fan-funded radio show that depends on you for our success. Join us at Patreon.com to help make this show an even bigger and better radio experience. Sign up and find out about our rewards program. Being a patron doesn't have to be a long-term commitment. There's absolutely no obligation. You could join today and end whenever you'd like. But the time we have your support would be so greatly appreciated. We'd also love to hear your thoughts about the show and even your ideas for rewards. Join us for the ride. Join us at patreon.com slash the stuff file program. This is an exclusive excerpt from the stuff file program with Peter Anthony Holder. Peter Alessandria is a professional photographer and a former entertainment attorney. He recently published his first self-help book entitled Be Bigger Than You Think You Are, Overcoming Our Self-Imposed Limits to Have the Life We Want. He joins us via Skype from New York. Hi, Peter. Hey, Peter. Thanks for being on the program with us. Which came first, by the way, uh, being a photographer or being an entertainment attorney? Well, actually, it's a very interesting story. I moved to, after law school, I moved to Los Angeles because I had... Uh, a dream of becoming an entertainment attorney. I went to law school in upstate New York. And when I got to California, it was my first time being exposed to the creative process, to the uh, filmmaking industry, photographic industry, and all of that. So uh, I didn't pick up my first camera until probably 2002. Wow. Was it always a passion of yours, or was this just a hobby you picked up at that time? Uh, You know, I picked, it was love at first sight. I picked up a camera and I just fell in love with photography. It became, it quickly moved from a hobby to a passion. And since you went through the whole lineage of becoming a lawyer, which I I don't know what the, the impetus was for you becoming a lawyer. I don't know if it was something your parents wanted you to do. But when your family and friends heard, yeah, I'm leaving law behind, I'm going to take pictures. What was the reaction? Uh, they're still recovering from that. Uh, you know, they were a little surprised. But I came to a crossroads, Peter. I'll be honest with you. I, I lost my law business in 2008, 2009 in the global financial crisis. Okay. And I spent a lot of time trying to resurrect it. And by the summer of 2009, it was clear that it was not going to come back anytime soon. Now, having lived in California for many years, I kind of had that kind of new age, think positive mentality about things. And I think at one point I had read a book called Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. And so I decided, you know, maybe this is an opportunity for me to do something. I certainly enjoyed being an attorney, but it was never my passion in life. And I thought, you know, if I'm ever going to do this, let me give it a shot. So it was at that moment that I decided to turn my hobby slash passion into my business. So when did you go from reading a self-help book to actually writing one, uh, the book being Be Bigger Than You Think You Are? Yeah, so this this, uh, is another interesting story. But this came about uh, after – so basically what happened was in 2009, I moved my life back to the East Coast, and I set up shop as a, a professional photographer. And for the first three years, Peter, I was stuck. I mean, nothing was happening. And at first I thought, well, you know, it must be the economy because the economy was still slow from the global financial crisis. And I thought, no, no, it's not the economy. It's, it's uh, uh, the fact that I don't have a formal education in art or photography. 
And then I thought, well, maybe that's not it. Uh, oh, it must be it must be all the competition from the other photographers out there. And, I, and, and at one point I was even certain it was because I didn't have the latest and greatest camera equipment. Well, it turns out none of that was the problem. The problem was nothing outside of me. The problem was inside. The problem was basically I had a really negative self-image when it came to being a creative person. I was filled with fear of criticism, fear of rejection, filled with self-doubt, and all of that conspired to keep my life very small. And it was very difficult for me to start a new business in that state. Was this something that you became self-aware of, or, or did someone have to point it out to you? So I had started many years ago, one of the other benefits of moving to California when I did was there was a lot going on in what they call the human potential movement, uh, spiritual growth, personal growth. And I started reading books and I started doing workshops and seminars and stuff like that. So I had some level of self-awareness, but it's, it was amazing to me how deep the denial can run because I was really unaware that what was running my life were these subconscious thoughts and beliefs about myself, which says, I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. Nobody's going to like my work. I'm going to be criticized. I'm going to be rejected. And all of that negative thinking, which was under the radar, I wasn't consciously aware of it, was, was keeping me stuck. And it was at, at a certain point when I realized gosh, maybe it's not the economy. Maybe it's not, you know, all the things I listed before. Maybe the problem is inside. That's when I started looking inside and I started taking inventory, if you will, of, of the thoughts and the beliefs that were running my life. How long of a time frame did this process take place? Probably started in early, in late 2011 into 2012. And I really started doing a lot of introspection. And I started becoming more aware of these subconscious thoughts and beliefs that were running my life. And I embarked on a, a journey, if you will, of replacing all those negative thoughts and beliefs with more positive ones. And how long was it before you started seeing positive results? Uh, it was really within a few months. Basically, at that point, uh, one of the first things I did was I started making cold calls for my commercial photography business. So there are, there are three aspects to my photography work. One is commercial product photography, and, and that includes some architectural interior design photography. The second is portraits and headshots. I actually photograph a lot of executives, including a lot of attorneys. And my tagline for that business is, I used to be a lawyer, now I shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they laugh. <laughs> and then the third part of my business is is my fine art photography. And those are my landscape, cityscape. It's actually mostly New York cityscape images. And one of the things that I do, which is which at least until recently was pretty unique to me and a select other uh, group of photographers was I track the moon over the New York City landmarks. I have an app that tells me where the moon is going to come up and where it's going to set. And I coordinate that with different landmarks like the Empire State Building, the Statue of Liberty, and so on. And I've created this collection of this really stunning, uh, unique photography based on the moon in juxt juxtaposition to these iconic landmarks. Wow. So um, now what happened? So basically, I started looking at, at, at these thoughts and beliefs. And the most important thing was, Peter, I began to say, I began to question all those beliefs that I just assumed were true. All the beliefs that says, you know, I don't have it. I went to law school. I never, I've never taken a photography class. I've never even, I never even took an art appreciation class in college. And I had to question those thoughts and say, well, maybe I don't need the education to actually show or, or to experience my own creativity and talent. So I started questioning all those thoughts and beliefs. And then I started using things like affirmations vision statements, a vision board, guided visualizations to begin to reprogram all that negative thinking that says, I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. So when did you come to the, the decision, uh, not only that you, this was good for you, but you could put it in a book, the book being Be Bigger Than You Think You Are? So it wasn't until 2019, I was actually back in California for the first time since I had left. And I was doing a lifestyle uh, photo shoot for a product photography client in Los Angeles. 
And after that, I drove up to Yosemite to go to the national park to take some photos of the landscape up there. And I drove all the way up there. I got out of my car and I took about five steps and I tripped on, there was a hidden curb. I couldn't see it. I tripped. I didn't fall, but actually in that moment, I tore my calf muscle and I was immediately rendered lame. I couldn't walk. I could barely drive. You know, the trip was basically over at that moment. And, but what happened was this thought popped into my head, literally at that exact moment when, when the pain was so great, I was seeing stars, this thought popped into my head and that was, now you can write your book. Hmm. Now I had been thinking about writing a book for years because I really did. I mean, my, the basic story is I went from somebody who never won an award for anything in my life to somebody who's won more than 70 awards for my photography. I went from somebody who never imagined it was possible to see one of my photos published in a newspaper or magazine to someone who's had photos published in newspapers and magazines around the world. And from someone who never thought it was possible to sell one photo to someone who has sold and license my photos to collectors as far away as Australia. The only thing that changed, Peter, was my idea about myself, was how I saw myself, was who I thought I was. The original title of the book was, Who Do You Think You Are? Now, that came from a conversation I had many years ago. I was actually having, when I was still a lawyer, I was having an argument with somebody, and in the middle of the conversation, she stopped, she put her hands on her hips, and she looked at me and said, Who do you think you are? And it was meant as an insult, but Peter, that question stopped me in my tracks. I was like, oh my God, what a great question. Who do I think I am? Mm. Uh, I may have actually said that out loud because she suddenly had a very confused look on her face. I never saw her again, but that question stuck with me. And I realize now that this is the most important question we can ask ourselves because whoever we think we are is exactly who we're going to end up being in life. And it was only when I began questioning all those negative thoughts that most of the time I wasn't even aware of. But when I was aware of them, I thought, well, that's just the way I am. Did you ever never... did you ever send the person uh, that you had that argument with a copy of your book? <laughs> no, I <laughs> Signed <haven't>. copy. <laughs> I, I really I lost track of her. But as I said, that question stuck with me. I hope she, and so, I hope she walks into a bookstore one day and finds it and sees you on the back cover. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the book is Be Bigger Than You Think You Are, Overcoming Our Self-Imposed Limits to Have the Life We Want. It's, uh, I, you know, you, you mentioned the fact that you, you didn't go to school for film. Uh, I've always maintained, and I could hear it in your voice, uh, you have a passion for what you do, and that passion alone will drive a lot of people's uh, destiny towards what they want to be. I agree with you 100%. However, I had something working against that passion. And then and what was working against me was this negative self-image, this, right. this idea that says, I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. Nobody's going to like my work. So it was only by reprogramming all of that. And the good thing about the book is it's set up as a workbook. So at the end of each chapter, there are exercises that people can do. The other thing I want to mention real quick is I do an online Zoom workshop every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. All are welcome. And I go through, we're going through chapter by chapter, we're going through the book. And in real time, people are doing, doing the exercises, asking questions. I'm talking about all the different topics. So that's open to anybody. They can find out more on my website, which is BeBiggerToday.com. So that's BeBiggerToday.com. The, 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 the Zoom conferences take place Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, correct? Correct, yes. And again, the book is Be Bigger Than You Think You Are. Uh, Peter, thank you very much for, for being a guest on the program with us. Thank you so much, Peter. Peter Alessandria, author of Be Bigger Than You Think You Are, Overcoming Our Self-Imposed Limits to Have the Life We Want. He has two websites. One is BeBiggerToday.com, and the other is PeterAlessandriaPhotography.com. You can go to my website at TheStuffFile.com, check out the show number for this program, which is show number 0597, and you'll find links to both of Peter's sites, plus links to either Amazon.com or Amazon.ca, where you can order his book directly. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from The Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit TheStuffFile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications.